Okay, so welcome back to the channel and in this video we're going to take a look at completing this one. Now if you remember in the last video and it was about an hour and 30 minutes long and it will be linked at the end of this video if you want to go back and watch that one or it's probably important to watch it if you want to catch up to this point. But what we're going to do on this one is we're going to finish putting the dimensions on and we're going to also run a section through there, right? We're going to do an offset section that's going to run through our entire part. Meaning that I'm going to draw a line and let's go ahead and pull up my marker here. I'll start a line kind of going from here. And it's going to kind of section up through here. We're going to go up again. And we're going to go across here, right? So that's going to be the section that we're going to create in this video. And that's what this, this view here is showing. So if you're kind of wondering, and I knew I kind of created this in the other video, but that's what... This section here is going to dictate that, right? So we're going to go ahead and do this. And remember that we've done all of this in paper space. So if you're wanting to kind of brush up on paper space, that's also another thing that you want to take a look at. So I'm just kind of freehand sketching all the stuff that I know that we have to do on this drawing. Anytime you create a section, it needs to be labeled with some kind of letter. And then we need to also letter it down here so we're going to have this where it's a section down here right i'm not going to go ahead and it's kind of hard to spell this stuff out with a mouse but okay so we're going to have all of this stuff and that's what we're going to do in this video as well as putting the video uh putting the dimensions and things of that nature on okay so let's jump over to autocad and go ahead and get started on that part Okay, so this is where we left off. So remember that we had on our first sheet, we created both of these two assembly views. On the second sheet, we took a look at assembly one. Let's zoom into that. And on sheet three here, we did assembly two. And we also looked at doing these on different viewports as opposed to being in one big viewport here that we have on sheet two, right? So we kind of took a look at both of those different, different approaches. Now let's go ahead and start doing our sections and things of that nature. Now, this is where you're going to have to kind of go, all right, where am I comfortable putting my sections at? Should it be in model space? Should it be in paper space? And to really be honest with you, it doesn't matter, right? So if we create or decide to create them in model space, we can do that. And we're going to decide to create another one here in paper space. And it's just going to work out exactly the same in the grand scheme of things. But just remember that there is no right way or wrong way to do this. So I'm going to jump over to the modeling tab. I'm going to come down to this view here. And then this is where I'm going to create my phantom line. Now I don't remember if I created a layer called phantom, which I did. Okay, so I'm going to select this as my current layer. So now this is my layer that I'm going to use. And I'm going to start a line. And a lot of times it's really good to use a polyline when I create this. So I think I'll go ahead and use a polyline. So let's go with a polyline. I'm going to click at this midpoint. Then I'll come right over to where it perpendiculars here. I'll come up. And now I need to stop this. So what I'm going to do is touch this midpoint. And then come to where it tracks here. Do a left click here. And then I'll go straight out this direction. Right? Let's go ahead and escape out of this. And now we need to extend these lines in both directions a certain distance, right? Now, if you remember back, I made the extensions on these a distance of five. So anything that is five or greater would be perfect. There is no magic number or no standard number here. So I'm just going to pull this out and let's make it a distance of eight. Oh, and it looks like I kind of went backwards on that. Let's do an undo. And then I'll do that correctly. All right, so I'll go here, I'm going to pull out this direction, and I'll type in 8. Yep. And it looks like I may have my something turned off here. And now I kind of just remember what I did. I was actually stretching that to a length. Let's go ahead and put this back to that midpoint. And then we'll use the lengthen command. Delta, tell it 8. And then all I'm going to do is click on that side and on this side. Okay, let's complete this line here. So I'm going to draw a line and I'll go straight down from here. 
and let's say that distance is 30 looks great likewise here on the other side I'm gonna draw a line going straight down here let's call it 30 all right and then I'm gonna select all of these lines and tell them to join together so just J enter all right so what I should have now is one complete line that's going around next thing I need to do is go ahead and put an arrowhead on this right I'm gonna jump back to the sheet one just to kind of I mean sorry sheet two just to see how this looks so if I go to sheet two you can see that I do have my phantom line that's cutting through this we'll adjust the width and things of that nature here in a second go back to the model space and then I need to create some arrowheads right what I usually like to do is that I'll set this annotation up to be 1 to 60 I'll go to my dimensions, so D enter. I just want you to double click on where it says annotated. I'm just going to make that the current one. Go ahead and hit close. And then I'm just going to create a linear dimension from here to here. Right? And click here. Now, all I need to do is get those arrows. So remember to make those arrows mine. I will select this dimension and then I will explode it. So I'm going to select this icon here here I can go ahead and delete all of this, this, this stuff except for the little arrowhead set. okay let's go ahead and select this arrowhead here select this endpoint here hit the space bar one time place it on that endpoint do the exact same thing on the other one so I'm gonna select the arrowhead select the front grip space bar one time and then click at this endpoint now I need to rotate these so I'm just gonna select that you can see it's already selected. If I go to rotate, I'll give it a base point at this end point and kind of rotate it going upward. Same on this one, right? So I need to rotate it. And this time, I think I'll go ahead and use the grips on this one. So I'll select it here. Select this front grip. Hit the space bar twice. You see the word rotate here at the bottom. Then I'll move my cursor going straight down, do a left click here, and then hit escape twice. Okay? Now I kind of have this all completed. Now I am a firm believer in putting my text in in paper space as opposed to putting it here in model space. Let's go ahead and change this back to one. And all I needed to do with that was just to get the arrowheads. Let's go ahead and take a look at sheet two here. And then I'll go ahead and put my text on here, right? So I'm still in the phantom layer. I'll go and use a single line text. So single line text. I'll give it a justification of Let's call it TC in this case, top center. I'll place right at the end of this endpoint, hit the enter button, because I'm going to save the height and I'll leave it at point two. And then I'll type in the rotation angle. In our case, it's going to be zero, so just hit enter. And it should be now ready to type in what character I need. Let's call this one A. Do a left click off of it and then hit enter, right? Let's move this down just a hair. I'm going to move and pull this down just a little bit. Okay. And then I'll copy this to the other side. So I'll go to copy, CO, select this letter, enter, go from that endpoint to this endpoint. I'll come down to here, and I'm just going to copy this text since it's already here. Let's go to copy this, and then let's go ahead and move this here now you notice that I did turn my ortho off in order to move that let's go ahead and put that back on ED and then go ahead and start you know customizing this text here right so this is going to be called section a dash a and if you want to underline this we can go to the front of this remember we can type in percent percent u always give it a space in front of it and then I'll kind of arrow over to the end of this give it a space behind it click here and then do an escape all right so there's my section AA that's highlighting what's going on here so doing it this method we have this in, in model space the text here is in paper space once again I'm a firm believer in putting all my text in paper space let's, let's switch over to uh, sheet 3 here and now we're going to do this one actually on the viewport. So you'll notice that I'm not inside of the viewport. I'm not in model space. 
and the reason I know I'm not inside this viewport because this line would be dark. If I double click on the inside of here you see this dark line that tells me that I'm inside the viewport. I'm going to double click to the outside here and you will see that I'm outside the viewport. Another thing to look for is also if you look at your UCS here in the bottom corner it changes so when I double click here that UCS jumps to here it disappears here. If I double click on the outside that UCS comes back I don't have one on the inside. Alright like we did before let's start off with the polyline. We're still using this phantom layer. I'm going to start from this midpoint here. I'll go over to where the perpendicular is here. Go straight up. I'm just going to touch that midpoint. Come to where it tracks off of it. Do a left click there. And then go right across to here. Alright, let's escape out of that. And now you see that this part can kind of be extended over, right? So you notice off the, you know, kind of the first thing you're going to notice is that this distance here is going to be a lot different than what you're going to see in model space, right? It's going to be a lot smaller in this case. So what I need to do is I need to kind of stretch this out that distance. I know that this distance is 5 in model space. So I'm going to use that just to give me a distance. So just like we did before, I'll go ahead and use the lengthen command, delta, and then for my value, I'm just going to go ahead and select from this midpoint and say I want to make it down to this endpoint. So that will set my distance and then when I click here and then here it will extend it out and then I'll do one more click on here just to double that, right? Alright, so that's what I have. Let's go ahead and hit escape. Let's finish this off so I'm just going to do a line here going straight down from this endpoint going to here. And then I'll go ahead and copy that to the other side, right? I didn't know the distance that I used. I'll go ahead and copy that to the other side. Okay, now I'll go ahead and put the arrowheads. Now remember that I switched back my annotation scale at the bottom. So when I use a linear dimension here, from here to here, it should be the normal size that I need it to be. And I did that because I, if I go back to model space, I don't know if you caught it, I went ahead and put this back to one to one. Let's go ahead and go back to the sheet too sorry sheet 3 and then I'll do the exact same thing here I'll select it explode it go ahead and get rid of some of these extra stuff that I don't need here and then go ahead and place them on the endpoints here just like we did before and then we're gonna also rotate them and I'll use grips since they're gonna be so much quicker and easier remember with grips you select the square here Spacebar twice, come down, do a left click here, escape twice, and do the exact same thing here on the other one, right? So I'll select it, select the front grip, spacebar twice, go up in this case, and then hit escape twice. Alright, let's go ahead and put our arrow, I mean our designations on here. So I'll use a single line text again, TC, enter, I'll go ahead and place it at that endpoint, the height of this. I'll still leave it at 0.2, enter, no rotation, enter, and then I'll just call this one B just to be different from the other one. So I'll go to B, do a left click here, and then escape, and then let's move this down. Let's go to copy, select here, go to that endpoint, and then place it on that endpoint. Now if these are too long for you, you can stretch these and I will show you a nice cool command to stretch both of these at the same time, right? We got two options. So remember that the stretch command we have to use a crossing window. Alright, so if I use the regular stretch here, I'll go to stretch and then I have to use what is called a crossing polygon, right? So I'm going to type in CP, that stands for crossing polygon, go ahead and hit enter and what this is going to allow me to do is kind of create a polygon shape avoiding all of this other stuff that I need and you'll see that I have highlighted just only the part that I need go ahead and hit enter after you get to that last point there now I have this selected I can go ahead and remove that shortcut to remove that is go R enter and that stands for remove now I can physically click on the viewport then hit enter I'll pick a base point here and now you'll see that as I move this up, it will move together, right? 
So that's one method of doing this. Method two is a little bit more cooler, but you can go to this in, uh, Express Tools. And this is something that if you go looking around here, it has a lot of useful tools in here. I'll go to the multiple scratch option. And what this is gonna allow me to do is it leaves these little cool windows that are going around my shapes, right? So I'll just go ahead and create both of those. Hit enter. Once again, I have this selected, right? I'll go down to where it says remove objects, select my viewport, go ahead and hit enter, pick a base point here, and then go up. So both of those methods work exactly the same. It looks like I didn't quite stretch that correctly, but both of these methods work absolutely the same. It's just one use a little bit more graphics to it and the other one, you know, it's a little different, right? So let's go ahead and stretch this back up like I did before. CP. And the reason why I like using this one, it's relatively easy to me. I've been using this for a long time. That other method is something that's kind of new. But, you know, both of them will work the same. Okay, so now we have that section on. With this one, let's go ahead and copy this like we did before. Let's place it here. Turn my ortho off just to move it up to here. Edit, so ED. Go ahead and select your text that you want to edit. I'm going to start this off with percent percent U space, and then I'll tell it it's called section B dash B space behind it. I'll click here below and hit escape. Let's go ahead and turn our ortho back on. All right, so now you have both of those. One is created inside a model space, and the other one is created in paper space, right? The one thing I didn't do, and I'll go ahead and do it now, is select both of these lines here, join it to this. And then it's always customary to make this line thicker than what it should be, right? It should be a nice bold line running through here. The way that I'm going to do this, and remember we're on sheet three, so this one is done with outside of the viewport and it's done individually on the viewports, is do a right click on this one. Let's go to the properties. And then we can look at the global width, right? So here I can play with this number. I can say, hey, let's see what point 05 looks like and go, all right, that's too thick for what I need. And then I can just start adjusting these numbers, right? So I can say maybe point 001. Maybe make that number a little bit bigger. Let's say point 005. Well, maybe a little bit bigger than that, right? I thought I would get a little bit closer. So 0.01, is that good enough for us? 0.02. And I'm just kind of experimenting until what I find looks right. That looks good to me. So 0.02 looks really good to me. All right, now let's go back and see how we would handle that on sheet number two. So in sheet number two, remember that this is done inside of the viewport. So I have to double click on the inside of this viewport. Then I'll select it here. Same principle to apply. I'll go to the property windows and then I'll come here. Now I want you to see the major difference here. So I type in the 0.02 here. It's going to be a lot smaller. Make sure you have this viewport locked. So when you zoom into it, you can see that that barely registered anything inside of our viewport because everything in there it's scaled up so much higher so these two numbers will be quite different right let's see what point two looks like and I'm just kind of cleaning this up and now you can see we're getting a little bit thicker let's maybe go with point five and see how that gives us and that looks good enough for me I'm just basically comparing comparison doing a comparison between this line and then these lines here. So that's what I'm kind of looking at to base that on, right? If you want to make it a little bit bigger, you can. I'll make this number maybe 0.6. Just to show you it's a little bit bigger, right? Let's zoom out. You'll notice that I'm still inside of this viewport. I'll do a double click on the outside and now I'm back into the paper space, all right? So the last thing I need to do here is go ahead and put some dimensions on this, right? And dimensions, relatively easy let's go ahead and 
Take a look at the dimensions where you'll go to the annotation tab here first. I'll click on this little drop down here or you can just type in de-enter on your keyboard. That'll bring us to here. It kind of doesn't matter which one of these you use because like I said before I'm a firm believer in putting my dimensions in or on the paper space. But I will show you in this case that you can dimension this in model space as well, right? So if I'm going to do this in model space, I'll go to here where I now leave it at annotation because we do have an annotation set, scale set for this. So I'll go here. Let's take a look at modify. And then we're going to start from right to left. So my primary units, let's go ahead and get rid of those trailing zeros. Underneath the fit, we're going to let annotation take care of that. Underneath the text, let's go ahead and make this 0 0.125. And then underneath my symbols and arrows, let's go ahead and take off our center marks. Go ahead and hit the OK button and then close, right? Now I'm going to double click inside of the viewport, right? So you'll notice that inside of this viewport, I have this set to 1 to 60. My scale is at annotation and once again, always verify that your viewport is locked. That's going to stop anything from happening when I zoom in and out. Okay. Let's go ahead and start putting some basic dimensions on this, and I'll start with doing some radius dimensions, right? And I know I don't have too much room here, but I'll go ahead and put a radius dimension here. And you can see I kind of ran off the space here. Let's kind of move some things over. So I'm just going to go to move. And let's drag this stuff and kind of move it over a hair. All right. I'll fix these uh, letters here in a second, but remember that we're still locked inside of the viewport, right? All right, let's go ahead and finish putting some radial dimensions. So I do have a radial dimension here, and then we can go ahead and put some diameter dimensions on this as well. So our diameter dimensions look like we have a dimension here. And I'll just hit enter just to save us some time here. All right, and then drop a couple of linear dimensions here, right? So I'm just gonna use these. So that's my linear. Go from that end point to here. Oh, it's one thing I just now noticed and I'm sorry, <laughs> I have to apologize for it. But all of my dimensions are set to use current. I should have dropped it down and went and told it that these are gonna be dimensions, right? So let's go ahead and fix all of these really quick. I'm just gonna highlight them including these two as well. I have my properties window open here to the side and then I'll go ahead and put them on the correct layer which is the dimension layer. Okay. Let's go ahead and finish our dimensions. So let's do our linear dimension here. Go from that end point to this one. And let's go ahead and place another linear dimension from here to here. We'll have to move some of this stuff around, but that's okay. Remember that we're working inside of the model space while we're in paper space. And I'll show you one other thing that is happening here. Let's escape out of this command. Let's double click on the outside here. And then let's take a look at model space. So these dimensions are actually happening in model space, right? So we're doing these exact dimensions in model space. And I'm not gonna do all of the dimensions. All of these are just kind of, you know, normal standard stuff here. So if I really want to do the dimensioning here, I can do that as well, just to show you that. And it's saying that my annotation scale is set to one to one, right? Now I want you to notice one thing while it's telling me this is that here in model space, I do not have it set to one to 60, right? So if I go ahead and I put a dimension on to here, I'm expecting that dimension to be small. So this is one of those things that may happen to you as you're dimensioning, you go like, whoa, something just happened, right? Go ahead and turn this off or delete that. And in order to fix this, all I have to do is come down here to the bottom, set this equal to 1 to 60, and then continue my dimension, right? <clears throat> all right. And then I'll place it at that end point. Okay. And that's pretty much all the dimensions that I'm going to put on for this view, right? So let's jump back to sheet 1. Still our isometrics. Sheet 2. And you can see all of these dimensions and things of that nature. Let's go ahead and fix this stuff here. 
where it actually drives me insane. I'm just going to move these over. And then I'm going to move this down. Okay. So these are the dimensions. Now, I just want you to make sure that you understand what I just kind of did here is that if I'm in model space and I'm using annotation, right? I have to set it up and the viewport size is set to 60. Remember that this is where a conflict can happen at if you're going to do your dimensions here. And what I mean by that is that if I'm in on sheet three, say I had these at two different sizes. Um, maybe I had this one set to one to 50. When I go and I do those dimensions, I can't explicitly do those dimensions in model space. I have to do them here in paper space and then do them by double clicking here because that, that viewport will be set to the scale here, right? And let's show you what an example of that looks like. Let's go ahead and create a viewport here. And I just wanted to show you kind of one of those things that you have to look out for. So let's go ahead and create a rectangular dimension here. And let's double click on the inside here. And let's see, we're going to take a look at, let's look at this one. It looks exactly like the other one. I'll go ahead and set my viewport to 1 to 50. So you can see that this one is a little bit bigger and I'll adjust everything here in a second. Just double click on the outside and kind of move this thing over a little bit. All right. Let's do a REA. That just stands for Regen All. And then let's go ahead and put this on the correct one. I'm just going to use the match properties. So shortcut for that is MA. Select this viewport and then select that viewport, right? I noticed that that one adjusted. I'm going to come back in and adjust it. I just wanted the viewport to be exactly the same. Let's double click back on the inside of this one and set this one equal to 50. Okay. Let's double click outside of here. Now, normally, and this is why I'm a big proponent or a big person, uh, or, or big, I, I really like to use my dimensions in paper space. So that's one of my biggest reasons for doing this. So if I go ahead and come back to my annotation and then I just go ahead and put a linear dimension and I'm going to go from here to here and it'll go ahead and place that dimension, right? We're not actually worried about the size of it quite yet or the actual number, I should say. But what I want to show you is that if I do the, the, the dimensioning out here, everything is fine, right? And say I'll do a dimension from here to here. Just to show you that that is going to be the size that I need it to be, right? If I double click on the inside and I go ahead and put a linear dimension, once again, it's going to read this as set to 1 to 60. Let's go back to my linear dimension here. And I'll go ahead and place that dimension here. So I'm expecting those two to be the exact same size, right? Let's double click on the outside here. And if I jump to the model space, let's go over to that dimension here. And I go ahead and place a dimension that's linear here. Remember that this one is set to 1 to 60. So everything in this viewport is going to work totally fine, right? Everything is set to 1 to 60. I have it set in model space to that. But wonder if I have something that is set to 1 to 50. That's going to be this one, right? So if I go and place my dimensions, and once again I'm on the outside in paper space, and I use a linear dimension from this endpoint to this one. I'm expecting it to be read right and the size of it to be correct, right? I'll double click on the inside of this one. I'll go ahead and put that exact same linear dimension. This is going to read 1 to 50. It's reading an annotation scale. And I'll go right across from here. Ah, I forgot to lock the viewport. Let's hit escape on this. And let's go ahead and undo what I just did. Okay. And then let's make sure I lock this viewport. Okay. Let's go ahead and... Now I'm still inside of this viewport. I see that it's bold. Let's go ahead and put a linear dimension from that endpoint. And I just need to move this over a hair to that endpoint, right? So I'm expecting these two sizes to be exactly the same. But what happens when I jump into model space here? Then I'm taking a look at this one and I'll go ahead and place a dimension on it, right? So I'll go to linear from here to here. And I don't know if you can take a look at that. You can see that these two are different sizes. And the reason being is that my model space is reading 1 to 60. I created this one inside of the viewport, which was reading 1 to 50, which did it correctly. 
but if I'm going to put my dimensions here in model space, it's going to be a problem, right? So it's always customary that if you're going to do any kind of dimensioning and you're working in viewports, work on them here in paper space, activate the viewport, and then do your dimensioning. Try, if you can, to avoid doing your dimensions in model space, mainly because this scale may not be the correct scale for all of your viewports, right? So that's one important thing. I don't, I don't know if I could, if I ever explained that before in, in any of my other videos, but that's a super important principle to kind of understand what you're creating or how you're trying to do your dimensions, right? So make sure that whenever you're creating this stuff is that you're doing it consistently. If all of your scales are gonna be exactly the same set to 60, then it's perfectly okay to do all of your dimensioning in model space if you're using paper space, right? But if all if you have one viewport that's different, then you're kind of stuck with the opportunity or stuck with the choice of doing all of your dimensioning even either in paper space or working on it outside here in paper space and double clicking on your viewport just so you get the option of having the right viewport scale, right? I hope that wasn't too confusing or you know trying to explain how to do that, right? But that's something that you will have to kind of figure out as you're doing any kind of dimensioning here, especially when you're dealing with viewports, right? So with that being said, uh, I don't think there's too much more in this video that I need to show you. Uh, and this one has been, you know, kind of something that is super neat. I want you to stay tuned because next video that you're going to see after this one is going to be me dealing with this, especially doing it if you're like 3D modeling. So I'm going to do this in 3D modeling and we're going to try to create this exact same thing that is happening. Now, keep in mind that that's going to go a lot faster because isometrics is one of the things that take you the most time to draw any, any time you're creating that in a 2D environment. So we have to do a lot of trimming and a lot of little neat work. 3D, if I create the parts and I'm going to create this thing and I'm going to rotate the other one going up, it's going to work fine, right? So I want to thank you guys for sticking with me this long. Uh, if you want to see me just draw things and you don't need all of this explaining, I would advise you to go ahead and check out my other channel and it will be linked here at the end of this video. And all it is is just me going through drawing and it's set to some music. I, I see some people do like looking at those videos um, on this channel, but I'm only putting those videos on my other channel and I'll try to, you know, promote that one a lot more. And thank you for all the people that are constantly subscribing to this and looking at these videos. Super important to me. I do appreciate your time. And until the next video, I'll see you there.